Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. This show is brought to you by Pet King Brands, the makers of Zymox and Oratine. It's OBEHAVE with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces, their perfectly pampered pets, and who's walking who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the All Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. You know, the grain of America is underway. And that applies also to people and our pets. In fact, one out of every three dogs, that's about 18 million, is seven years or older. And uh, for most breeds, that equates to senior citizen status. Now, our feline friends, uh, they also are aging, but uh, they seem to be better able to hide their advancing years. On our show today is a champion for our gray muzzled dogs and our senior cats, especially those waiting, hoping for forever homes while they're inside an animal shelter. Joining us today is Marie Moody. She's best known as the founder of Stella and Chewy's. It's a leader in raw and natural pet foods. And today she's on board. She's representing good old dogs and cats. Please join me in giving pause and applause to Marie Moody. Welcome to the show, Marie. You're back on our show. I am. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Arden. All right. (laughs) And you know what? Just by the end of the show, she just may convince you to adopt a senior pet. Well, that's what we're trying to do. She's got that (laughs) kind of magic. And I know you will all say thank you. But first, we have to take a quick commercial break. So sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a pause. For furry ones, actually, sit and stay. All Behave will be right back. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the O Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Yep, she's back. Years ago, Marie Moody, she was a guest on our show. And uh, happily, we both have expanded I'm hoping not my waistline, but in the world of pets, she started her business, Stella and Chewy's, in her Brooklyn, New York kitchen. And it is now headquartered in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. You got like more more than 500 employees. Our show is now the longest running pet podcast on the planet. We've been on the air since 07. We have led parallel lives. Did you realize that, Marie? Actually, I really didn't realize that, but now that you put it that way, I mean, uh, <laughs> never mind the pets aging, we're all aging, right? But we can age well. <laughs> That's so it. you kind of have a special, yeah, I love these senior pets. Talk about how you connected with senior pets and your role in National Adopt a Senior Pet Month. Sure. Well, if you're lucky enough to have a pet that lives a long life, then, you know, you'll have the experience of having a senior pet. But what we're really focused on here is bringing awareness to the fact that senior pets are adopted at only like a 25% rate in yeah. these shelters. People walk by them it's uh, and they tend to go towards the younger, the kittens and the puppies, and they're really missing 
opportunities because there's, you know, as you know, if you've ever had a senior pet, they are amazing companions. And well, puppies and younger, younger dogs and kittens are wonderful. But you know what? We call them the wonder year the first year with them because you wonder where your sanity goes, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, especially depending on who you get, right? You, you never know. Well, you have a couple of ones that really touched your heart, and obviously it's you named your business after them, Stella and Chewy. So you got them from shelters. Tell us a little bit of their backstory and, and how they inspired you today. Sure. Well, I actually, I got Stella. I rescued Stella first, and she was um, she was about nine months, so she was right in between being, you know, sort of the latter stages of puppyhood. And she's an example of, uh, she was very destructive, and I was working a lot at that point, and so <laughs> I didn't have a boyfriend. She clearly didn't have a boyfriend, so we went out and got Chewy. Okay. And Chewy was, I think Chewy was like two years old or so when we adopted him, and he um, unfortunately came with a lot of medical issues. And the vet, when I took him the next day, said he didn't really expect this dog to survive, but he said, if you want to try, like, uh, definitely look into feeding him the best possible food, you know, do some research. And so I went home, and the more and more research I did, I kept coming back to the same thing, which is that raw foods uh, most closely simulate how they would have eaten in the wild. And while we've domesticated them, their DNA and everything else is still very close to the wolves and, and foxes. And so if you can feed them something more close to a raw diet, it's more bioavailable for them. And from my experience creating this for my own dog, Stella and Chewy, they thrived and lived to be, you know, Chewy's medical issues went away. He lived to be almost 17. Wow. I mean, wait a minute, we got to do Bow Wow. That is, inc that's a Methuselah. Did you change his name to Methuselah? <laughs> no, he was chewy. <laughs> and the other thing, because the raw food is in different forms and freeze dried is very easy to take on a trip to be able to store and to be able to make sure everything's good to go. So that was kind of genius. Well, thank you. Thank you. I think there just weren't a lot of people at the time doing raw diets. And like you said, first of all, starting it in New York, there wasn't most raw diets. People think of them, they're frozen. So to have one come in a different state, which is the freeze dried, they're still raw, but the moisture's removed. So like you said, they're shelf stable, they're great for travel. And, you know, what I found is that people were very, it was easier for people to imagine feeding a freeze-dried diet than a frozen diet, simply because it looked more like what they were used to feeding. But, I mean, were you a little girl sitting on a swing set one day saying, one day I'm going to own a mega company of freeze-dried food products? I mean, what were you thinking about becoming before all this? No, I, I really don't know what I was thinking. I mean, my parents would ask me the same thing. <laughs> I, I think they're proud from, of you now. That's, that's the yeah, fact. yeah. I, it's, it's, it wasn't like a destination career, but in fact, I was in a different in a different line of work. I was in the fashion industry, and while I worked for a lot of great people, it just never seemed as important as my dogs seemed to me. And so that was really, I just wanted to do something for them. I wanted to do something that felt like it mattered and made a difference, which is what drew me to pet food. So there's a lot of shelters out there with some good old dogs and cats. And tell me from your standpoint, let's talk about personality. They're not cray cray like a little puppy. What are some of the benefits? How are you going to be their PR marketer for senior pets and shelters? Take it away, Marie Moody. <laughs> Well, from my own personal experience, twice now, I've had a younger dog first and then adopted a second one to complement the younger dog. And the second one has been a little bit older. And in both instances, it's easier. You know, it's just easier. <laughs> I, do do my, you feel that sigh coming out of your oh voice? Like, God. oh, thank you oh so much. God. I mean, this puppy that we got, um, well, now it's been almost, well, over two years. When we first got him, it took him two years to get housebroken. And I, I, I don't know exactly what he was thinking. I mean, we don't know what they're exactly thinking, but he is housebroken now. But, you know, they tend to be easier to walk on a leash. They right, are yeah. 
You know, they're just like, in so many ways, they're easier than a puppy. And it's not to take anything away from having a puppy. It's a wonderful experience. But depending on where you are in your own life, you know, it might be, it might be a better fit to get somebody that's a little more mature. And also, as you know, what you see is what you get, right? Which is yeah. better than most dating apps for humans. People right. Fake out. A senior dog or cat is going to be there at the shelter saying, well, these are my likes and dislikes. And what do you think about that? That's actually kind of refreshing. I, you know, I agree with you. And I, I actually would compare it to dating in your 50s. You know? Oh, our time. <laughs> yes. You know, things change. And there are advantages to somebody a little more mature. And that's for both people and dogs. I love that. I love that. So we've talked about the personalities. Now let's dive in to things nutrition because it's an old stomach. So you got to be kind to that belly, right? For the dog yes. or the cat. Yes, I think that that's definitely true. And it's also probably even more important is really just the bioavailability of the food. You want to make sure that you're feeding something that, you know, like people, you, you want something that is closer to its original source. You want fresh food and having a raw diet really simulates that the best. All right. Water. Sorry, H2O. I know you don't make water. <laughs> <laughs> but so, well, there are pet waters. You yeah, know. yeah, but good old water. How important Water's is good. that for the senior dog or cat? It's very important. It's um, even more important, actually, for cats who tend to not drink as much, which is why people tend towards, you know, potentially wetter foods for cats. But it's important for dogs, especially in the heat, that you provide access to fresh water so that they stay hydrated, much like it's important for us to stay hydrated. Well, one advice I've heard is also maybe have a few more water bowls and definitely kind of look around because you got a sloppy drinker. I've, I've yes. dated a few in my past, sloppy drinkers. Same. But, I mean, what are you going to do about it, right? But to wipe up the, the spills too so they don't hurt and get a, a limb injury, right? Yes, exactly. Now, I, I keep the, a water bowl downstairs and upstairs in my bedroom. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just it's easier for them. If you get thirsty in the night, do you head over there or? No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, move over. I am kind of thirsty. Hey, everyone. <laughs> She's like, why is she asking me these wild questions? <laughs> but we have the very, very talented, the very devoted to all animals, Marie Moody of Stella and Chewy. We're going to dive in a little bit more because this is National Adopt a Senior Pet Month, but we're going to take a quick break. So stay Pet that senior dog. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Pause up, pet pals. Arden Moore here. I have great news. Pet King Brands, the makers of veterinary-approved Zymox and Oratine, have unleashed new products aimed at keeping your cat and dog healthy and happy. You can now keep your pet's coat in tip-top shape with the new hypoallergenic Zymox shampoo and conditioner. They contain oak extract and enzymes that provide relief for sensitive, itchy, and irritated skin. And call in all feline fans, Zymox has not one, but three new products to keep your cat purring. They include an enzymatic topical cream to relieve itching and inflammation. There's an enzymatic ear solution that's easy to administer and an enzymatic ear cleanser. Me? Wow! All of these catering to cats. More great news. Save 20% at checkout by adding this code 20 Arden. That's 20 Arden. Learn more at Zymox.com. That's Z-Y-M-O-X. Pause up. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is John O'Hurley reminding you you're listening to the O Behave Show with Arden Moore on Pet Life Radio. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to O Behave. Here's Arden. 
Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I'm having a good time with Marie Moody of Stella and Chewy. I hope she's having a good time. I've been on satellite media tours, and it can be a grind. So I'm just your little fun in the middle of it all. What do you think? <laughs> I think that's wonderful and a much-needed break. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we've talked about good nutrition. We've talked about good water, and they do age quickly. It's not every four years, you know, there's studies. The bigger the dog, the faster they age, of course. Um, Just to give you all an example, if you have a 10-year-old dog, let's say 20 pounds, in human years, that dog is about 56 years old. But as Marie will know, a 10-year-old dog that's more than 90 pounds is an AARF. Um, They are 78 years old. So let's talk about the fact that we need to pay attention to the aging speed based on the size, Marie. Yeah, I would say that what you're saying is exactly right. And that brings it back to how important nutrition is. I think that that's the single most important thing other than a lot of love that you can offer a dog. And, you know, yeah, they age quickly, but so do we. And right. oh, come on, well, we're ageless wonders. We're our middle names are Betty you. White. Come on. Yes, well, certainly yours is, but you know, I mean, they 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 don't get ARP cards, thankfully. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we get those before we hit fifty, oh, which I find insulting. I know. Okay, I but know. that's another story. Same, same. It's so depressing. <laughs> so good nutrition also helps good cognitive, right? Yes, of course it does, and that goes back to your other point about water. It's really important to. Um, keep them active, hydrated, well-fed, and well-loved, and that's how you're going to get the most uh, quality time with them. I do um, the nutrition column for Catster and Dogster, so I get to talk to veterinary nutritionist Brainiacs. And what's your take? They, they also say work with your veterinarian, too, because in certain situations, everyone's individual. Mm-hmm. You know, certain senior dogs and cats can benefit by Things like omega-3s or probiotics, mm-hmm. prebiotics. I mean, but just don't be emptying the supplement aisle, you know. But well, what's your take about working with your veterinarian on meeting the needs of that good old dog or cat? Well, I think that you can you can do a number of things with that. I think you can either work with your vet or with the internet. I mean, there's so much information online. Of course, you have to be careful and yeah, sift not through it Google. carefully. No, no. But, you know, you can you can find some reputable sources and, and you can get information about nutrition and, and like you were saying, um, different supplements. Um, most pet food on the market today, though, is, you know, we're required to pass certain levels and there has to be certain levels of vitamins and minerals in the food. Right. And it's better if it can come from the food source itself, but there's nothing wrong with supplements. And depending on what your pet is suffering from, it can be a really great idea to, you know, if you if your dog needs, um, like my dog, he's 13 right now. And, and what's his name? His name is Tummy. Tummy. He and my son named him. Like, <laughs> Oh, know, come like, on, Marie. Everybody says that. Everybody no, says no, no, that. No, 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 but it's true. It's true. I was like, are you <laughs> sure you want that name? And he was like, yes, that's Yummy his name. Yummy for my tummy. Come yes, on. Yes, exactly. So it's Tummy. And, um, and Tummy has, um, you know, he's a big dog. He's 80 pounds. So, oh, what, what um, do you think he is? What's he consist of? Well, some sort of poodle and something. We're not really sure. But he's a big guy with long legs, and he's, yeah, he's got arthritis now. And so I've, you know, I do a bit of supplementing myself as well as he goes to PT and does his little underwater treadmill. And then he has acupuncture as well, which seems to really help. So there's a lot of different mediums that you can use as they age to, you know, and they're individual, like you said. So it it depends also on, on the dog or the cat that you're talking about. And I know maybe Tummy was great at fetching balls as a kid, but (laughs) I've been told that, you know, it's better also, you can rich a senior dog's by sight and sound and smell, snuffle mats, looking for something, a new walk, maybe rolling the ball instead of making them go flying after it. Um, Have you found yourself sort of looking at Tummy and saying, hey, you know what, This, this might be something good to still enrich you mentally and physically without having you tear a ligament? 
Well, I mean, that's it. I, you see them, they naturally slow down, much like people. And so he used to jump up on the bed. He used to chase my son around. He used to jump in the pool. And you is know? your son's name Yummy? Did you rhyme it? <laughs> no, yummy no. Tummy. No, my son's name is Charlie. Charlie. And um, yeah, no, and the Charlie, yeah. Charlie used to, oh my God, that poor dog. He used to chase that dog around. And then he was, you know, Tummy used to have this thing once he got outside when Charlie was much younger, four or five. Right. He would steal his mittens and like run laps around the house in the yard with the mittens or the hat. Right. And um, yeah, and Charlie, my son's first curse word was, Tummy is an ass hog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Such a proud yeah, mama. But, know, but right? that's a memory. Now, Charlie has the memory of, of Tummy with the mitten situation. But now Charlie's getting memories of how to be with a good old dog, right? Well, yes, exactly. As a matter of fact, he last year, uh, well, it was like right as the pandemic, well, it's not over with. It's probably never yeah. going to be over with. But um, he did some volunteer work in a like a rehab center for dogs, like a physical oh, really? therapy thing. Yeah. So wow. that, yeah, there was, you know, there's a lot of dogs that like, there's some crazy stories. You know, dogs get injured, dogs get older, all kinds mm -hmm. of things. And there's places you can take them that they really can do some amazing, incredible things to get the dogs back in, in, in good shape and and even dogs that have lost the ability to walk or whatever. And it's it's like people, you, you just use it or lose it, right? right? So how did that make an impression on Charlie, do you think? I think that it just, it taught him... You know, it taught him compassion and it taught him because at the same time that he was working with these other dogs, I was taking Tummy, you know, to that same place. And so he got to see how important it was that, you know, that he stretched Tummy's legs and he would massage him. I mean, I think it's teaching him compassion. There was one dog that came in that this, this guy had tied to a clothesline, you know, with the leash so the dog could kind of go back and forth. I mean, it wasn't yeah. bad intentioned. I really, it was not bad intentioned. It was just not well thought out. And this poor dog ended up becoming like paralyzed from Aww. like, it. Did. and so Charlie was there during all of that. And they were able through many weeks of this physical therapy to bring that dog back to walking. So I think there's- And a, think about this as a mom, look what you just were able to give Charlie, something that you can't read in a book or get on Google, he experienced something that maybe will pump up the compassion. I, I think so. I think all kids, I mean, I think pets are a wonderful addition. I think they help, I mean, my pets help me to be a better mother. And I think that they help our children as well learn compassion. And, you know, my son's an only child. So, you know, these are his brothers, you know, his That's dogs right. are his. So. From a definitely different mother. <laughs> Well, and, it, you know, it, where holidays are coming, I know there's a lot of shelters that are filling up again. Yeah. COVID it cleared the way. Any message you want to give out to our over 500,000 listeners that are thinking about adding a yes. pet or two? Yes. my I'd like to um, suggest that you not walk by the senior dogs if you're going into a shelter and considering adopting you know, give the mature cats and the mature dogs some consideration. We went over what some of the great things about them can be. I mean, a lot of them have a lot of love and many years left to live. Yeah. And so to that end, Stella and Chewy's um, has a fund called the Journey Home Fund. Thank you. And See, I was getting around to it. I, I didn't forget. <laughs> Go for it. And the Journey Home Fund is what we do to bring attention to this senior pet. We will reimburse any fees associated with adopting a senior cat or a senior dog anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Nice. Very, 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 very nice. Everybody can do their part, right? I'm sharing my home. I got married and we have a furry Brady Bunch. I have a 17-year-old <laughs> cat, Mikey and Aww. an 11 year old cat named Baxter. We had our Bernie's Mountain Dog mix, Boo Boo, Bujo. She lived to be 10 and a half Aww. and I just loved her gray muzzle. Uh, so I'm just saying, I think they just put a smile on our face. I think senior pets make us better humans, Marie. What do you think? Absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more. They definitely do. I, I was just saying this to somebody, I think it's an honor and a privilege to be able to take a dog through all of its life stages. 
I agree. Hey, everyone, we're speaking with Marie Moody. Yeah, she created Stella and Chewy's, and she's pretty cool. She's got a great named dog named Tummy, <laughs> and she's here to help with the whole campaign of a National Adopt a Senior Pet Month. Anything we need to direct people to before we say goodbye? Sure. If you could go to stellanchewies.com backslash adopt. Okay. If, in fact, you want to adopt a senior pet, we would be honored to reimburse your fees and send you home with a coupon for some Stella and Chewies. We love that. And I wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. We have a lot to be grateful to, right? Yes, and even my do. bad jokes that I've landed on you. <laughs> and well, it was nice talking to you again. It's been a few years, but we're both here. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And everybody, please, I want to give a shout out to Pet Life Radio. It's the largest radio network on the planet special to my producer, Mark Winter, the surgeon of sound. Please go to the Pet Life Radio. Check us out. Check out me. It's my real name, ArdenMoore.com. Hope you can be my YouTube uh, pal. Subscribe. And until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave. Coast to coast and around the world, it's all behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail wagging pet tips and have a fur flying fun time. All behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.